My name is uh, Karen Elder. I'm from uh, CyberArk Software. And today I'm going to talk to you about a problem that I'm sure anyone who runs OpenShift or any other tool uh, in your IT environment uh, have bumped into, uh, which is secret management. And how do you trust your uh, containerized applications when they run within OpenShift or Kubernetes? Uh, and how do you free, on the other hand, uh, your developers from the headache of dealing with secret management? So, I'm sure a lot of you have heard about uh, many initiatives in the last few days of digital transformation. And with the move to the new cloud native uh, environments, obviously we have much more infrastructure applications, much more automation running uh, in your IT environment, whether it's in the cloud or on premise or in hybrid uh, uh, environments. Uh, if in the past we were much looking in security looked mainly on human users that uh, need to access different resources and looking after what users can do, monitor them, uh, take care of access control. In today's environment where there is much more operation, uh, the new privilege is actually code. Many tools are doing what people used to do in the past and now automation is taking care of that. Uh, and we should be uh, looking to see how are we securing that? How do we put uh, a solution in place that will allow us to control and understand what all these tools and automations and applications that are running in our environment can access or can do? <laughs> and why is that so important? So is all of those users and code that it, and tools that are running in our environment there are, there are much more secrets and, and uh, keys and tokens and passwords that are scattered all around. Just try to count in your organization how many, uh, for each tool or each user uh, that is working in the environment, how many different systems or resources or cloud services it can access. For each of these, they need to have a certain secret, a certain key that will allow them that access. Now, put, tie all of that together, that's a huge risk to your organization. And anything left open like that basically leaves a door to an attacker to come and gain control to, in your environment. So I, I, I like calling all those new tools the new uh, domain controller or the new ID administrators, because basically that's what they do now. And if now a DevOps person is now controlling your Ansible or your OpenShift, Basically, this has become a human controller to your risk. If an attacker gains control on your Ansible or your OpenShift, they can easily get access to almost your entire environment. And we want to make sure that we can help you protect that. Um, so some of you may ask or say, but I am using Ansible Vault or I'm using uh, um, Open, uh, the Kubernetes uh, secret solution isn't that good enough. So that may be a good local initiative, but when you look at it from uh, an enterprise perspective, a large enterprise that needs to uh, manage and control and secure a very large environment on premise or in the cloud, we don't want you to have those security islands. And why is that a security island? First, you can't really share secrets or credentials between such local tools. And second, from a security perspective, these are solutions that were not built really, built really with security in mind with all the capabilities that are needed for secret management. Things like central audit or rotation of credentials and, and secrets, they do not provide that. So we want to really provide you an enterprise-wide solution that can uh, be deployed and, and applied to our environment, whether you're running today on premise, tomorrow on AWS, and maybe uh, next year in Google Cloud or in uh, Azure. Okay, we want to be, um, we don't want to be locked to a certain environment. Um, so CyberArk is really uh, positioned in a unique uh, um, uh, place to do that uh, as the undisputed uh, leader in privilege account security. Um, and um, with more than um, 
3,500, or actually it's today 3,800 uh, customers globally, uh, all around the world, and more than 50% uh, of the Fortune 100. Uh, we've been dealing for almost 20 years with uh, uh, challenges related to privilege access, secret management, uh, applications, uh, and humans. Uh, and in the last uh, couple of years, what we have been doing is helping our enterprise customers, larger enterprise customers all around the world, <laughs> to go through that digital transformation uh, journey uh, and to be able to think ahead, you know, uh, how do you design um, your environment, your applications, your tools that are going to run in those new environments from the beginning to work in a secure manner. If everything is all about automation, let's put that in, into, let's automate security as well, and let's put that into our pipeline uh, and build it uh, correct from the first place and not to just increase our technical depth. Uh, now, the good news is that um, probably all of you are somewhere in this journey, uh, so that's a great opportunity to deal with that, okay? Now you can decide how you want to deploy and, and apply good security uh, methodologies into your uh, environment. And uh, we'll see an example uh, uh, for OpenShift uh, today. So first, uh, we have CyberR Conjure, um, which is our secret uh, management solution for the cloud and DevOps uh, environment. Uh, CyberR Conjure was uh, really designed and built uh, from day one to address those challenges of uh, uh, cloud, uh, elastic, dynamic, ephemeral uh, environments, and also integrating all in, into all of those tools and uh, platforms. On the one hand, it's supposed to address the need of the security teams that need to have the controls in place, but do not necessarily know, you know all the technologies and new tools uh, very well. <laughs> On the other hand, uh, we provide native tools to developers. We really want to remove the headache of secret management to developers. We want to deliver a very seamless solution to them that they will simply, hey, focus on writing code. We will take care of the securing all your uh, uh, secrets. And also auditors can benefit from it because they will get like a central uh, audit for and proof for everything that is happening in your environment. And uh, this is mainly relevant to highly regulated organizations, the, the audit piece. <coughs> so what have we done uh, with the uh, OpenShift? That's what I'm going to focus today. We, we have integrations with many tools and environment. Today we'll talk about OpenShift um, and how we can deliver uh, secrets into applications running uh, within your OpenShift environment in a highly secure manner. And on the other hand, really, as I mentioned, free the developers from dealing uh, with that. So uh, the integration uh, goals were, were really around security uh, and how do we uh, securely authenticate each container, each application that is running. We don't want to replace your hard-coded credentials with a password to our solution, because basically that will not solve the problem. That's shifting it from one place to the other. We want to solve that bootstrap problem. We want to solve that secret zero problem. So uh, people call it in different names. Uh, and still provide central audit, provide segregation of duty, so each application can access only the secrets that it's supposed to access and not other things. We believe in least privilege uh, model. Uh, and of course, also secret rotation. So once in a while, based on a policy, you want to be able to um, rotate those secrets. So even if someone has put his hand on any of those secrets, after a while, it will not be relevant anymore. OK, so uh, before we go into the demo of how this uh, integration works, so you can run Conjure uh, within your OpenShift environment. We have a master. Uh, with high availability, cold and hot standbys. You can choose to run them outside or inside the OpenShift environment based on how many uh, environments it serves. But we also have this uh, unique component that is called follower. A follower is an active replica of our master, so it includes all the secret, and it sits close to your application. So for example, you can put one or more followers in the same cluster of your application, and that means your application will get secrets 
in a very high performance, in a scalable way, it will be close to it. And even if uh, for some reason the connection to the master is lost, it will still continue to serve your application. So that's a very robust and scalable uh, architecture and highly available architects uh, uh, that we provide there. We realize that secrets, if they, they are not delivered to your application, basically it would stop working. So that's a critical piece. We understand we're uh, a critical component in that uh, whole uh, process. Um, so let's see a, um, a short uh, demo of how this works. We'll get back to that uh, uh, diagram. Uh, so first, we'll see within the OpenShift uh, environment, as I mentioned, we have uh, the master running and the two uh, followers. They are already deployed in this environment. And the first thing that we will do is define the conjure policy. Um, so the policy, as I mentioned, uh, we're try we want to provide developers the tools that are native for them that will not hurt their velocity and will remove that headache. So you can see the policy is a YAML is a YAML file. So you can write it with your application, check it into your uh, code repository, um, and um, uh, uh, basically it's a declarative uh, policy. Uh, what we do here at the beginning, we define an application uh, and that needs to access a certain uh, database. So it needs the secrets to that database. Uh, so we just give permission to that application to access uh, the database. We'll also uh, run it in two uh, pods in our OpenShift environment. So we, they de we define those pods as hosts. And we provide access to our application. Uh, and we say it will run in the, those pods. OK, the first thing we do, we, co we load this uh, uh, policy into Conjure. We will now go to the uh, Conjure uh, UI. I mentioned it can serve admin security. We see all the policies that we have. We'll enter this policy that we just loaded. We see all the entities, the permissions, who can access what, and all the related audit uh, to that uh, policy. So everything that is related to this policy is available here. Everything is also available via REST API, of course. So uh, we can also see the secret that we loaded and its value. We'll see it later from our application. This is the secret. Now we'll go back to our OpenShift environment. We didn't run our application yet, so there are no pods that are running. We, n we will now run our application. It's a very simple and dummy application just for the demo. It basically, you ask it to retrieve secrets and it will show it to the screen. Not recommended for a production environment. <laughs> so we're deploying our application. We'll have two pods that are running this, the same code. So we'll see now, <laughs> we'll list the pods that are running in the environment. So we have two pods that were deployed with different names. Uh, and we can see now in OpenShift that these pods are actually uh, running. In our policy at the beginning, we defined those pods with application name. Now we call our stupid command of retrieving passwords to the screen. We see the secret that we saw before. And now we'll go change the secret value so you will believe me that it really gets the right password from Conjure. If we re retrieve the pa the ask it to retrieve the passwords again, then we see we have the new password here with the AIA that we just added. So what happened here? Let's go back for a second to our diagram. So we have these two pods running the application, OK? These applications need to get access to secrets. These secrets are stored in Conjure. We want to make sure that if we're delivering the secrets to those applications, we actually authenticate them. These are really the applications that they're saying they are, and they are authorized to get those secrets. So what we do here 
our uh, solution comes with this code that you run in a sidecar container. Okay, it, this sidecar container before your application starts will basically ask, uh, will authenticate itself against uh, uh, CyberR Conjur based on its characteristics that we also defined in our policy, like the name or the namespace, the name of the pod, the namespace, or, and there are other attributes that are supported. We will authenticate and check that this uh, pod is really the one that is uh, allowed to, uh, that is really the one that it's saying it is, and that it's allowed to access the secret that it's asking. I may have several applications, and each of them will be able to access different secrets. It doesn't mean that if I run in the same cluster, I must be able to run uh, to, to access all those secrets. So we have that segregation of uh, uh, duty. <laughs> What's also nice about it, that we have this tool, Summon, it's an open source uh, tool, that will deliver the secret to my application container. So if today you have applications that already consume secrets from an environment variable or from a file, you don't need to change anything in your code. You can simply deploy this solution, and it will deliver the secret to your application. So you remember, we mentioned we want to free developers from dealing with secrets. That's the way. You can just configure it, deploy it, and that's it. Your, your applications don't need to change uh, a single line of code, and they can consume the secrets from a secured repository with the audit, with the segregation of duty, with the access control, um, uh, and of course, with the ability to also rotate secrets uh, that CyberArk has a lot of experience with and is capable of uh, changing and rotating hundreds of types of uh, uh, secrets that are out there for different systems. So let's go back to our uh, uh, demo. Now I want to add a third pod. Uh, oh. Okay. No. Okay. So the uh, the last part that I had, uh, I'll skip it. Basically, I wanted to r show you, like, if I run my application in a third pod that I didn't define in my policy at the beginning, where we defined uh, a policy with which applications are allowed to get secrets. If I run my application now in a third pod that was not defined, which is unauthorized. Uh, we could have seen that it basically uh, fails and will not be able to get the, the secret. So only really the authenticated and predefined applications uh, can access them. Okay, so I haven't mentioned that CyberR Conjure uh, has an open source version uh, that you can start with, the, with your, like a local uh, initiative. Um, and you can go to www.conjure.org. Uh, you can download it. There's also like a tutorial that will take you through the initial step. You can try it out. Um, and of course, there's also a supported enterprise version that also includes all the high availability and, and capabilities when you really want to operationalize it and go uh, wide uh, to your enterprise. It also integrates with a CyberArk Privilege Account Security uh, solution which was, again, a leading solution in the market for privilege account uh, security. Uh, so if you're already a CyberR customer, uh, many of our customers are here, you can basically leverage your existing uh, investment and uh, still manage all your secrets within the CyberArk vault and get it directly to your OpenShift uh, containers and many other tools, whether it's Ansible, Jenkins, or uh, whatever it is. So. First, thank you very much for your time and for attending my session. Um, uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions if you have uh, after we finish here. I think we're just at the time to, to wrap it up. Thank you.